This time we will discuss the derivative of a rate of change. Please don't forget to subscribe on my channel. So the objectives defined in instantaneous velocity, discuss some examples of derivative as a rate of change, answer some activity applying the derivative as a rate of change. So we are going first to define what is the instantaneous rate of change? The derivative of function f at number x sub 1 interpreted as the instantaneous rate of change of f at x sub 1. So rectilinear motion, the motion of a particle in a line function. And the average velocity is the change in the directed distance from a fixed point or change in time. So that is derivative of s with respect to time so if a function given by s is equal to f of t where s is the number of units of a directed distance of a particle moving along a straight line from a fixed point at t time then the instantaneous velocity of the particle at t units of time is v units of velocity where v is equal to f prime of t another one we have speed Remember, speed is the absolute value of the instantaneous velocity. That is always positive since that is a distance. It can be from the left or from the right, regardless of direction. So you are going to get the absolute value of the instantaneous velocity. Example here, a ball is thrown vertically upward from a ground with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second. If the positive direction of the distance from the starting point is up, the equation of the motion is S is equal to negative 16 T squared plus 64, 64 T. So first question, find the instantaneous velocity of the ball at the end of one second and three seconds. How many seconds does it take the ball to reach its highest point? Obviously, when you throw a ball, it will go up and there is a highest point before it goes down. Third how high the ball the ball go fourth find the speed of the ball at the end of one second and three seconds fifth how many seconds does it take the ball to reach it, to reach the ground number six find the instantaneous velocity of the ball when it reaches the ground so we are going to draw first here is the ball and if you throw upward it goes down so we have the highest point here. And of course, you are looking for that uh, at the end of one second. And this is the highest point. When the ball is here, find the highest point. So first question here, find the instantaneous velocity of the ball at the end of one second and three seconds. So from the given, we have the given equation here. Ah. Uh, 60 negative 16 t squared plus 64 t. So the instantaneous velocity is equal to derivative of s with respect to time. Is equal to get the derivative negative 32 32 t plus 64. So this is the derivative of the given equation. So first question, the velocity, find the velocity, instantaneous velocity of the ball at the end of one second. So you just substitute V of one, then of one second. So negative 32 times one plus 64. And the answer there is positive 32 feet per second. So the ball is rising, obviously, at the end of one second. That's positive. So the ball is rising. So here is the 32 feet distance at the end of one second, 32 feet. That's positive. What about the end of three seconds? So you just substitute negative 32 times 3 plus 64. The answer is negative 32 feet per second. So obviously the ball is falling. It's going down. So it's here. Then of three seconds, then of three seconds, negative 32 feet, the distance. Okay, question number two. How many seconds does it take the ball to reach its highest point? 
So the ball at reaches highest point, your instantaneous velocity is zero. So if v of t is zero, so you have there uh, zero is equal to negative 32t plus 64. Solve for t. 32t is equal to 64. So divide both sides by 32. 32, the answer there is 2 seconds. So this is the highest point at the end of 2 seconds. Okay, 2 seconds. Oh, the ball. This is the highest point, 2 seconds. Next question, how high the ball go? So high, the height, number three. So when T, since you have there the highest point, highest time here, how high the ball go? That is two seconds. So let T is two. So substitute there, S is equal to negative 16 times two squared plus 64 times two. The answer there is, 64 feet so this one is 32 this is 64 feet the height the height the height sorry the height of the ball so that is 64 feet above the starting point next we have there number four sorry find the speed of the ball at the end of one second so speed remember that the absolute value of the velocity speed is equal to the absolute value of the, the instantaneous velocity. So we have there uh, one second. So V of one, it's 30, 32. The absolute value of 32 is equal to 32, 32 feet, 32 feet per second. So that is the speed after one second. What about after three seconds? So you just solve V of T is equal to the absolute value of V of three. That is absolute value of negative 32. The answer is positive 32 feet per second. Okay, so after one second, after one second, the speed is 32 feet per second. After three seconds, it's also positive 32 feet per second. That is the speed. Next question, number five. How many seconds does it take the ball to reach the height, the ground? So reach the ground, number five. The ball reached the ground. So your distance ah that's zero so s is zero so we have there negative 16 t squared plus 64 t is equal to zero so solve for factor out common is what is the common here 16 t oh you may write here negative 16 t and then t minus 4 is equal to zero. So we have two sets, negative 16 t is equal to zero, t equals zero. The other one, t minus four equals zero, t is equal to four seconds. So four seconds when the ball reaches the ground. That is four seconds. Okay, next number six. Find the instantaneous velocity of the ball when it reaches the ground. So we have there. Substitute your four seconds. So at t equals four. So v of four is equal to negative 32 times four uh, plus 64. The answer is negative 64 feet per second so that is the answer now that is the instantaneous velocity when it reaches the ground so the instantaneous velocity is negative 64 feet per second okay so for your assignment you have answered the following activity 
We hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.